Hi, we're the Brights coming to you from our studio. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, uh, we, we tried to get on here like what, five times in a row and it just stayed up saying broadcast failed. I thought we'd been rona <laughs> I thought we'd been... Uh, um, we had another virus. <laughs> Oh, we had another virus. Like the oh, coronavirus. like the whole world, like, touching right. them. <clears throat> oh. You know what? It's kind of funny, but when all of a sudden when your cell phones don't work, that could be, dr that's scary. That's weird. When did your cell phone not work? Uh, a couple, two or three weeks ago. Oh, I thought you were talking about right then. Oh, no, no, no. You got me so confused. It's like all of our, <laughs> it's like everybody's phones went, or at least our phones went down. It was about oh, a month yeah, and a yeah, half yeah, ago. Yeah, that was really weird. So yeah. then you're starting to like tell your family, okay, we're going to have a meeting place just in case the world shuts down, and then we're going to go out to our friend's house who has well water, and I'm like, what are we doing? Like, yeah. talking like this crazy We're going to eat off the land, we'll catch catfish and eat squirrels. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> my uh, all stop, like, yeah. stop. One time, okay, y'all want to hear? Let me just be some real truth right here. Y'all want to know some real truth right here? So, talking about squirrels. We are so different. And we could be married to each other and have total different things. Because one time with Richard, like we've been together 17 years, and about maybe year three, <laughs> he's cooking this big pot of stew, right? Y'all are going to, I'm going to have haters on here now. Half the people aren't going to ever listen to us again. But you have to understand, he's he's like from the country, so he knows how to eat off the land, and, and he doesn't let nothing go to waste. He doesn't let nothing my, go to waste. <laughs> as the and great so, theologian Hank Williams Jr., Bo Cephas says, a country boy can survive. <laughs> and so he, he's cooking something, and it smells delicious, right? It and is I was delicious. Like, and I was just like, wow, what are you making? He's like, I'm making stew. And I was like, oh, that's I really good. And, and, yeah, so I'm usually the one that cooks so it was really odd but it smelled great the whole house smelled good so I go to go take a bite I'm gonna go taste it and I go to put the like spoon in there and all of a sudden I see this like little thing like little I don't know like like a paw and that's what she said she goes I go is that is that a paw <laughs> y'all yeah. when I say a paw it's like this little thing it was some squirrel Paul. Stew. I don't, it was a that's leg. That's disgusting. I know. That's just so telling on us. So that never happened again in our house because we had to have some come to Jesus talks right then. But so, yeah. It was still delicious. Yeah. I'm just like, if that was roadkill, we're getting divorced. No. <laughs> but it wasn't, thank no, God. It's yeah. only good if it's fresh. <laughs> Okay, so that's not even what we're talking about today, but hey, welcome back. So we've been out for a while. We've been, um, we took uh, some time, went on vacation, got away for a little bit. I know people are putting little gross emojis, little vomit faces. I know, it's disgusting. Uh, so we're glad to be back. We've been out. We needed some time off. So we thought when we come back that we would talk about, but we missed you guys. Like we wanted to do some videos while we were gone, but we we're like, no, we've got to make sure we have boundaries and that we actually take time off because we would work all the time if it were up to us so we wanted to talk a little bit about um, having fun with each other and about not just living in the boring day-to-day -day, having uh, no stop. not that kind of no fun? Oh. To, but to, to to be intentional about getting away with your spouse be intentional about having a time with your spouse be intentional about having time with your friends because you know most of our life we live in the day to day. It's the mundane, the the everydayness, the routine, the getting up, the going to work, the cooking dinner, cleaning the house, Pain all that bells. stuff. That's that's normal, and we all have that, and that's what most of marriage is made up of is the everydayness. But we've been really good about um, probably in the last ten years or so about being intentional to. So here's our kind of our little formula that we use is to connect once a day at least. And usually for us, we, now that our kids are older, we're able to connect more than once a day. But to connect, like for us, we wake up in the morning and we pray and that's when our time is that we talk to each other. Uh, maybe it's having coffee a little bit in the days that he didn't have to rush out. Um, we have dinner together 99% of the time every night together. And even if we're busy working or we're in the same house, we make it a point to come together and have dinner. And then we try to go out so to connect at least once a day and connect to really have some conversation and with not each other. like hey how was your day good how was your day good what did you do oh, i worked and i did this oh, what did you do oh i cleaned out okay all right cool see you tomorrow <laughs> yeah i mean that's just surface talk you know it's hey how was your day man i had a really rough day today this uh thing that's going around with the coronavirus and you know people not showing up they weren't able to work so my workload tripled and they've just really put the workload on me, and that's why I've been so short with you. 
you know, things like that. I mean, getting deep, talking about, well, how'd that make you feel? Man, it made me feel like they don't appreciate what I do, you know, and talk about the stuff that's happening in your life. You well, know? and talking to each other about what's going on with your spouse, like what, what are their, what are they feeling right now? I think even more so than ever, we're living in this time where it's day to day different. Some days we're together and we're all doing awesome and we're like ready for 2021. It's going to be a great year. And then some days we're like all freaking falling apart and everything's going to hell in a handbasket. So I think we have to be able to talk to each other, to our spouse and say, what's going on with you? What are, how are you feeling? And, and instead of saying, well, you shouldn't be depressed about that. We have all this to be thankful for because that's how we do sometimes it's like why are we depressed about stuff we have so much to be thankful but but we still just get in a rut in our own heads whether it's anxiety with what's going on maybe it's just different life's just different and we're not not sure on a day-to-day -day. some days we have great days and some days i just feel like huh like my wind's out of my sails you know and i think personality types are more so like that different he he can just he'll just get up and go and every once in a while he'll tell me that he's feeling down and i didn't even know he was feeling down my personality type can get the wind taken out of her sails super easily. I know when she's feeling down, she's walking around the house with a knife in each hand. I'm like, <laughs> uh, you down again? <laughs> what can I do to cheer you up, man? Can I do it from over here? I think we need to social distance <laughs> until you put the knives away. <laughs> but, you know, we get into this day-to-day -day thing. And so we, like I said, we make it a point to connect, uh, to connect every day. And then to, to, to the formula is to connect once, at least once a day, to go on a date once a week. And we didn't always hit that mark when the kids were little because That's we had hard. so many things going on with the kids and their activities. We're but exhausted. It, but, when, but if we had tried to say, well, we're gonna go on a date once a month, then all of a sudden that would have been once every three months. So we made, the, we made it to where we said we were going out once a week, but we sometimes miss that mark, but we at least try to hit that mark. And sometimes just getting out of that, you know, we wanted to have a date together, but sometimes we were getting out of the house a lot because the kids had a lot of activities. They were in sports, they were in scouts, they were, um, you know, all, all these things were happening. We had church activities, so we were getting out a lot. We weren't just sitting home in, in a rut. Um, so we try to have a date the where it's just us, where it's not kids, where you're just having an adult talk, not talking about your kids, not talking about work, not talking about money, not talking about your problems. And there was a time where we were like, well, what are we going to talk about? Right. right. Go on a date and don't talk about your kids, yeah. your problems, or money. And we're like, well, what do we do? We're yeah. sitting there. We're like, okay. It was the quietest dinner we've ever had. We're like, I don't know. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. You want to go home? Yeah, I want to okay. go watch TV. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Man, can't wait till next Friday date night, you know. Yeah. And that, that's kind of how it was because, you know, we didn't have a... A normal yet we hadn't really done anything as far as date night when we were when she was single and we were I was courting her and chasing her and you know we were in pursuit of each other then man it was like date night we were trying to do the most epic thing we could do okay, let's talk about that for a second what were we trying to do in the most epic date night back then we were like how much cocaine can we score right and, and how much how, beer can we drink and how much beer can we drink and how much can we stay awake for two or three days <laughs> and have parties that was our epic dating so we're not the typical couple right. of we were like oh my god Richard the, was planning a right that was our normal right yeah. so when it was when it became time to have a regular date with no drugs and no alcohol and, and it was all like it was so boring yeah but you know what and if we just, if we have thought if we would have just thought man, I can't take this. This is just, you know, I need out. I, you know, this isn't going to work, you know, because a lot of people do that. They think the enemy has a really good way of making you perceive that this is going to be your life for the rest yeah, of your life till you suck. die, right? And it's, that's a lie because, man, our marriage is what we put into it, right? And it's not going to get better just on its own. We've already, we already, you know, we talk about that a lot when we do our conferences and when we do our videos, that the natural tendency and progression of marriage is to get worse, uh, but we have to do stuff to make it better. So yeah, that, that date night, it, it, it blew chunks. It was the yeah. worst date night, and we're just like, oh. Well, because we were trying to go from living this life of that was really a, a one-way street to to destruction for us. Right. Because and, and, and it's not just being and like, lonely. oh, well, we started going to church, and so we stopped partying. We started partying because our people, our friends were dying. Like, we lost three or four of our friends from ODing, like people were, their lives were falling apart, their marriages were falling apart, they're, they're, um, they were losing finances, they were dying, uh, things were happening, and we knew that if we wanted to save ourselves, we had to get away from that. We had to get new community, we had to get new friends, and we just had to start, we had to get new things, because here I was my third marriage, it was his second marriage, and uh, it was not going well. And when we first got together, he thought, oh man, you know, uh, 
she's not going to try to change me and and you know, he thought I was never going to change right, and, right. and my and, friends were all like man my two of my dead friends were like dude you know she's going to try to change you she's going to try to and I was like no man she's so cool man she buys the stuff she buys the drugs and the pornography and the alcohol man she's the coolest she's girlfriend like, ever and then it was all like we can't do this anymore and I'm like aha my friends were right, you know, bros yeah. before girls, you know, and... Um, but he did, he thought that that I would never try to change him, he thought that I would never change, but you know what, we evolve and we grow over time, and if we want our marriage, if, if, if having a solid, good marriage and a good family and, and, and a becoming normal citizens and living a, a, a steady life, we couldn't keep living that life. We had to have, for us, that's just, it didn't it? work. Being an upright citizen? Is that right? Upright. Upright. Yeah. Is that one of Richardism? Huh? Were you about to tell me some weird little thing that you thought it was another word? No, I did. It wasn't upright. It was oh something gosh. else. Okay, that's a whole nother. Anyways. Uh, but, but for us, we had to do that because we, we, there, we had big goals. God started revealing things to us in our life. It was just more than just, hey, man, let's go, get, let's go party. And then we tried to party where it was just partying um, a little bit. And for us, it just never worked. Like, we tried, but, you know, y'all heard me say this a million times. I would love to have one or two glasses of wine. Richard would like one or seven. <laughs> so, for us... Us, it just didn't work. It caused so much fighting, so much mistrust. One or seven, it'd be eight because yeah. seven would leave a little bit in the bottle, and I'd want to kill that too. I mean, Richard could drink an eighteen pack of beer in one night, like by himself, and so this this caused huge problems. And I just wanted to be like the party girl that can we just do it like on a on a uh, this and certain level, you know, but he couldn't do that. There's no that's no way to live. Oh my gosh, that's no way to live. No. You know. Uh, and you think, oh, you miss it, but man, you don't, because man, the horrific horror stories that have come from that, you know, it's our testimony, it's our story, and that's what we talk to people about and help them get through stuff, some hard times, you know. Um, but what we have now is so much better, so much better, and it's it's fulfilling and it's joyful. And you know, do we have our moments? Of course, you know, everybody has their moments, you know, where you don't see eye to eye on stuff. But I always know my wife has my best interest, no matter what. She's got goodwill towards me, right? And and that's how we live our life. That's how we live our marriage. And if we said, hey, if God can do this for us and, and turn our marriage around, then we can help people do the same thing yeah. because we were in a bad, bad, twisted way, yeah. you know? Yeah. So after that first even, date... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you know, we weren't even going to talk about all that. Right. Sorry. So that's after, just kinda... after our first date, we're like, oh, can't wait to do this again, Ooh, you know? Sign me up. But we did it the following Friday. We're like, hey, let's go out again. And this time we went out, we talked a little bit more. And we were away from the kids, and it wasn't that our kids were little. They were, what, 12 and 10, yeah. 10 and 12, so they were old enough to stay at home now. Uh, we didn't have to have a babysitter, but we used to get a babysitter. And or our oldest daughter, who was much right, older, she could watch them. She would know. watch them, or the next door neighbor would say, hey, let them come over and play and, and spend the night. And so after a while, our Friday nights, we started to look forward to them because it was our time to get away and just be... Sherry and Richard, you know, let's just be a married couple tonight. You know, we don't have to worry about the kids paying bills. And we didn't talk about any of that stuff. We didn't, but, but, but it took we, time it for took us to... It took years for us doing that, y'all. It's not like after a couple times we went out, and I mean, it took years. And it took five steps back, and two steps forward and five steps back. And we kept learning about marriage stuff. And we were going to marriage classes, and we were reading stuff. And we were learning about our personality types and our love languages and how to communicate and how to have conflict. And so it was... It, but it gave us stuff to talk about, and we started, and then out of all that came a whole marriage ministry and a comedy thing and all that, which is a whole nother story. But but just because um, we started connecting with each other, so with connect once a day, go on a day at least once a week. Um, we celebrate. We have a thing that we do that we've done it for about ten years now, and that's at least celebrating once a month. And what that looks like is it could be our anniversary one month, it could be our friend's birthday. We have a really great tribe that we have been solid friends with for like eight or ten years and it's always somebody's birthday i mean it's always it's always a special somebody's occasion birthday. yes and, and so it, we celebrate yeah it could be a graduation for one of their kids or it could it be um uh, like one of their anniversaries or their birthdays or um it was, sometimes it's just like fourth of july or, or veterans day or whatever it's just the, that monday off but <clears throat> we make it a point and sometimes it's once more than once a month we usually go to a church when church was in session right now with covid we're not at church but we would have lunch at least 
twice, maybe three times uh, a, a month on a Sunday with our friends. We'd all meet and it'd be like sometimes 20 of us at lunch. But we just make it a point to celebrate at least once a month. For us, we do that a whole lot more because we have a great community that we've surrounded ourselves with. And we couldn't with. do it with all of them, so six of us would get Sometimes, together, or yep, eight yep. of us would get together. Yep. But we would still do it just so that we can continue to yep. have some normalcy in our marriage, mm -hmm. right? And have something that, that looked familiar. Because when all of it is taken away and... There was no more date nights. There was no, you know, hanging out with friends. Everybody's quarantined, you know. Then we're all sitting at home just wondering if this is ever going to end. And then the enemy just starts playing the, your mind. And, man, Torn Wells gave such a good message today. And he says, man, if it's not good, then God isn't done. Okay. And, man, when he yeah. said that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is so good. Because there were so many times that in our marriage it wasn't good. But, man, if we would have given up, we'd have never seen what God was going to do in our marriage with our ministry and our comedy and our books and everything else, you know. So, yep. so, you know. so, you know, it's celebrating once a month. And that's just to get out of the mundane of the everyday. It's like we said, most everybody, I think that we talked to couples sometimes and they're like, it's just like our marriage is boring. Everything's boring. Well, it doesn't have to be boring, but most of your life's going to be boring because that's what makes up. How, how do you even have money to go on a vacation or money to go on date nights unless you're going to work every day and doing those things and taking care of the kids? So, but you can mix it up. You can do the normal things that we all go through, but you can always throw some mix, some fun stuff there in the mix. And community is such a big thing. If you don't have community around you, then it's time to maybe join some groups that you're, uh, have some interests that are uh, common interests or like for us it was church we got involved with our marriage groups and it was finding other couples who because divorce runs in packs just just a statistic that some people don't know is that that good marriage couples solid married people run in packs so is to find people that had the same kind of goals and the same kind of idea and the same kind of vision for their marriage that's what we wanted for our marriage because we wanted that modeled and not it's not like we're all working around some perfect marriage we all have our stuff but we're able to talk with each other we're able to um, encourage each other and we don't have people saying man oh you're you know your old lady is blah, 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 or man you shouldn't put up with that from him well, that's not how we talk about it we we talk straight with each other but we also encourage each other and we talk we about edify it. each other yeah a lot, yeah you yeah know? And that was really important for us. So, and then another thing is to, so that's the, to celebrate at least once a month. And then also is to get away at least, so some people say get away once a year. We say if you have kids, okay, wait, if you have kids, yeah. you've got to get away at least twice a year. Once with the kids, like a vacation, and once just, the just adults. adulting. Yeah. And I remember there was a time when Richard and I were first together, we had $7 in the Lone Star card. So that, which if you're not from Texas, that means that's like a welfare card. Like we did not have money for a lot of vacation. And, but we would do things like get a group on and get a hotel room and it would be like $69. And we'd take the kids, we'd pack up we'd lunches. We'd get them on 610, which is the yes. loop. And we'd drive yep. around the loop for about 45 minutes. Yep. And they're like, where are we going? We're like, just be quiet. We're gonna, we're having fun. Yeah. And after a while, we pull in. We and it pass could be like five hotel. miles from we our probably, house. We went by that hotel probably fifty times. Or we drive and it would get dark and just, and they thought we were going on some big vacation, right. you know. But we would get this group on, go to a motel or a hotel. We would get a hotel, and then we would get like. Yeah, a, I stayed in motels. <laughs> she stayed in hotels. Yes. That's another thing, like where we're from. Our she had ballet, I was the ballet. <laughs> Richard and I let make sure we park the car close to the window so, so we can watch our stuff. Right, and I'm like, we're not living like man, that. We had a station wagon, and man, we looked like the Griswolds, man. We had stuff on top of it. My dad had a big old blue tarp on it, and man, we had to watch it, make sure nobody stole our junk because man looking back all we had was junk and when man. i when richard and i are first together, i guess I said, but it was our junk right i was like what is your what's your number one prerequisite for um you know like staying so i got two uh, yeah he had two prerequisites for staying in a, a hotel or a motel and that was free breakfast <laughs> if they have free breakfast he thought we were like living it up baby are those bed bugs it doesn't matter they got free, they got free waffles breakfast. tomorrow i mean we're talking free breakfast those you know y'all those are those bullet holes in the window no no <laughs> no okay they got free breakfast <laughs> um he's also the person that if there is a tank a quarter tank of gas left in the car when you're we're returning the rental car and you no. and you they gave it to you and it had an eighth of a tank he will 
will drive around <laughs> and let that eighth of a tank run down before he would ever give them back a quarter of a tank. That's of right. <laughs> fair so anyway, and square. Anyway. Fair and, and square. square. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we would take the kids and we would take a blanket and we would make like these, uh, get like two queen beds and make forts over it. And we'd have blankets and, and uh, I mean, uh, picnic baskets and board games. Those kids thought it was the best vacation ever. So we're not saying that you just always have to go have some big extravagant vacation. But those came over time of working and saving and, saving and, 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 and that boring life every day of every day doing those things to get the money to do that. But there were times that we didn't have it, but we still made time and, and were intentional about having time with the kids and then intentional about us getting away. Okay, so fast forward to now where we're empty nesters. I mean... Man, we're Listen, going through that we're inheritance, to, man. We're trying to go. Through, we're trying to get away. We're gonna go. Didn't we just get away? I don't know. Want to go away again this month? <laughs> Those kids better be good to us, because man, we're spending their money like it's going out of style like, right like now. Like we have it. Like we don't have an inheritance to leave them. It good says leave an inheritance to to your children. I mean, uh, we're gonna leave a spiritual inheritance to them. <laughs> we're having fun, but you know that's the thing is that life is short, y'all. We gotta be enjoying our life. Right. We have to be. We, no one is. A promise tomorrow. We're seeing that in the world that we live in more than ever right now. Things are going, people are, things are happening to people. We need to enjoy our life. Like we just got back last week and there are all kinds of deals right now. We went to Las Vegas and, and we were going to go all these shows and they all got canceled at the last minute and we were like, well, you know, what are we going to do? do? Now what are we going to do? There's nothing to do there. And we thought, you know what? We're going anyway. So we got, we did a hot air balloon ride. We got a group on and we went on a, a hot air balloon ride. It was really cool. It was cool. That was then a we lot of fun. Went to Lake Mead and drove there. It was a couple of hours. Then we drove to the Grand Canyon and um, and not saying all that like oh look how great we are. We're saying we're living our lives because. And so that, what do we do? Uh, we got up in the morning and went to the Grand Canyon to see the sunrise at the Grand Canyon, and then we were there for a few hours. Then we went to go to the El Tovar where uh, when they did vacation when they go Chevy or when Clark don't you want to see the Grand Canyon? He's all like. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go, kids. So we you got know. to go there and eat and sit on their porch right. and have coffee. And and so we did that. And then that evening, no, no, when did we do it? Because it was two days. Or was it? Oh, right. We left. We got the Oh, yeah. We went, we went back that evening to do an evening at the Grand Canyon to see the sunset. And it was a completely different yeah. look. You know, the sun shining in a different way made the whole Grand Canyon look completely different. And I mean, yeah. it was. It was majestic. It was beautiful. And then we were there together. So we're talking and having fun. And then we went out to have a great dinner. Yeah. And, and we're just doing those bucket list things. So when are you going to get to your bucket list? Like, like you're going to wait till you're so old? I mean, we, we've been on a, a few cruises in our, in our marriage. And, and we get on there. And we see some of these people that are so old that they can barely get around. Some people are on oxygen. They're like, they're finally taking that cruise that they wanted to take. We don't want to be that. We want to be like, let, we're, we're trying to just do as much as we can while we can because who knows what's for tomorrow. I and mean, when we went on this hot air balloon ride, there was another couple that was on there with us. And they were in their probably late 80s, yeah. I would say. Because they had like, well, I think their oldest kids, they said, was in their 60s. So, and they were sweet as can be but feeble i mean they were old and so i was thinking how are they going to get into it's not like a door opens up and you step you into the hot air into a you gotta climb over this tall like i had trouble doing it they had to put like a like a ladder thing and you have to get in and i'm thinking she i had don't to dust stuff off <laughs> oh my god she freaked out because well, it was so it was dirty the desert. It was and so the everything's desert. got dirt on it and she's kind of go this is the, the dirtiest i've ever seen you she's all like <laughs> I just got to get back and take a shower. <laughs> I know. No, you didn't. I did really good. But we were you helping did, but this I had to say that. couple get in, and they they that had was a great. The dirtiest I've ever seen. They had a great. Um, they had a great trip and everything in there. And he was talking to me, and he said, "You know, they were uh, so kind. They were so sweet, outgoing. And, but I was gonna say they they were um, here. They were older, them. and they were out, and it was COVID." And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like they had their masks on, but, but I'm thinking, and he said, you know what? Sitting at home and being scared isn't living life either. He goes, I'm not going to live in fear. And I thought, wow, like that was just so profound to me. And so when it was all over and we we're going back to our cars, we were with them for several hours that day. And then we're going back to our cars. I started talking to the wife and just, she and I had a, a conversation in the parking lot. And she told me that he had bone cancer and that she had leukemia. And they both were, these were like one of their bucket list things. And gosh, it was just, you would never have known it by the way that they acted. Never known. But also you would have never known, by the, they weren't living life scared is the point. They just gave me such 
I don't Hope. know, encouragement yeah. to say, you know what? You let's live life. Let's live have life. fun. That's Instead right. of turning on each other and being angry with each other, let's help each other out. Yeah. You know, I know I've got deficiencies. I know I'm weak in some areas. I know you are too. Man, let's help each other be strong. Yeah. Let's, you know, together, you know, we'll be stronger. We'll have unity and let God work through us. Yeah. And I know you. Yeah, Instead to be... of the devil working on us. <laughs> I know we have to be wise. We need to wash our hands. We need to... Um, do the things that we need to do and be, be wise about stuff, but we can't live scared and we're not going to live scared. And we're, and I just saw that couple thinking, you know what, they're living their life because they don't know what tomorrow, none of us do. So we just encourage you guys to connect each day with your spouse, to make a point to try to have a date night once a week, to celebrate once a month with something with each other, with friends, um, and then to get away at least once a year. And we're, we're saying right now, like, let's get away like at least every three or three four months. times. <laughs> yeah, every three months. <laughs> once a quarter. And just know, if you're in a season where the kids are little, guess what? There is a reward coming. God says, the Bible says that God will give you double for your trouble. So if those kids are driving you crazy, God is giving, you, giving us double for our trouble. So we love you guys. We uh, are glad to be back. And we hope this helps. And we'll see you guys soon. And peace out. Later. <laughs>